<laughs> like whoa. more of like an exclamation point. <laughs> um, Yay! <laughs> I think that's us. Hey, is this me? That is you. All right, good. We'll Nobody knows. Up. It's a mystery. Okay, listen up, this is how it goes down. You listen to the best geek podcast in town. Gonna spit a few bars to let everybody know that you tuned in to the Geek Yoga Podcast Show. This song, the man, the myth, the nerd, with his mate, their wave to take over the world. Can't forget my man Rara, he can't do a cha cha, but he's got all the girls ready to show off their tatas. And the man called Well, his name is Nock, who's a full time geek from his head to his socks. These guys are crazy, people say that they're loony, just as insane as casting Batman as Clooney. So here is the show taking all the rest of the task, it's now time for the Geek Yoga Podcast. Bitch. Welcome to another episode of the Geek Yoga Podcast. I am Ra Ra, Wave, and Mr. E. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> they came up with it. I apologize. Well, he's a return visitor. He's been on the podcast a couple times before, at least, right? Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. Yeah. Twice. So I think that handle is just stuck. Yeah. yeah. It's stuck. Kind of like a, kind of like a, like a prison handle, you know, like they have like. Like Lefty or Squinty. And Princess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, today, our episode is going to be about the Marvel uh, Netflix show, The Defenders. Woo! Mm-mm, mm-mm. Actually, I think all three of us have watched, so hopefully this will be a somewhat, you know... Wow, we can actually have a conversation. Informed conversation, right, without us going, no, I haven't really seen any of this, <laughs> <laughs> Which has been what we've done at times. I'm just bullshit here, but based on what I know <laughs> about the storyline that it was based off of, which actually has nothing to do with the storyline in question, it is very similar to a poo book. <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, we have all watched it. I fucking watched it all in like one weekend. Uh yeah, two days for me too. Yeah, so I did. No, I, I might have actually done it in one day. I think I did it on a Saturday. I started at 11 or 12 in the morning and went till with breaks and stuff for taking a dump, went to about 11. Because it is only eight episodes. One Was that one dump or several dumps? I think there was at least one. Do liquid dumps count? I guess so. Okay, then maybe five. <laughs> <laughs> several hours worth. Of- yeah, yeah. <laughs> I apologize. A search party was sent out. I just want to say... I started... I I started on Sunday, watched the first like four, first half of it, apparently. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I didn't realize it was such a short se- season. Yeah, that. It was quick. Yeah. Thought, so, how, how long are the other ones? 13 episodes, 13, right? yeah. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. So, the fact that it was wrapping up kind of quick. I also feel like it surprise. didn't drag out because of that, which was nice. Yeah. yeah, it ended, and I was happy that it had ended. Not that it was... Yeah. Bad, but mm-hmm. you know, you were happy that it was it had finally finished. Yeah, yeah. So a, a, little, a little background <laughs> on this team, because uh, honestly, I believe that this team should have been called the Heroes for Hire, uh-huh. um, or maybe the Marvel Knights. But I figured they won't want to go the Marvel Knights route, uh-huh. <clears throat> because all right. So the original original Defenders team, which uh-huh. was a, essentially a non team, it was a team up. In uh, Marvel Features number one, back in 1971, was Doctor Strange, Hulk, and Namor the Submariner. Nice. <laughs> I do remember that. I remember that. Yeah. Um, and in the early 70s, uh, they, recru- <laughs> <laughs> they recruited uh, Clea, who is, she was a, I want to say sidekick, but a partner to Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. So another mystical member. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Silver Surfer, Valkyrie. Oh. Huh. Who uh, you guys may know from Thor? Yeah, mm-hmm. um, Hawkeye, Nighthawk. Nighthawk is essentially Marvel's Batman, mm-hmm. and not in the way that I say like <laughs> Moon Knight is Marvel's Batman. I mean Nighthawk was literally created to be Batman in Marvel Comics, but a villain. Yeah, uh, they, they did this with everyone. Hyperion is an evil version of Superman. Yeah, yeah. Power Princess was an evil. Yeah, the Squadron Supreme. Um, Nighthawk eventually did turn over a new leaf though and become a good guy. And this was part of it. Uh, Power Man, Luke Cage. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Son of Satan, a.k.a. Uh, Damien Hellstrom. And Yellow Jacket, Ooh. Hank Pym. Huh, cool. So uh, the, that was the first, like, real team team. Mm-hmm. At different points, um, I forgot that actually Luke had been part of that old team. 
uh, Hellcat, Red Guardian, Devil Slayer all joined at different points. Um, I know that um, when they reformed recently, sort of recently, uh, back in 2011, after, um, after Fear Itself, it was Hulk, Iron Fist, Doctor Strange... And I'm trying to remember who else was on the team, but I remember those three kind of took off. I think Namor came back for that, too. Hmm. So, a couple of them have been defenders, <clears throat> but let's be honest. This team was really the heroes for hire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't... And I've said this before, I don't really have, like, yeah. this sort of, like, super loyal uh, loyalty streak to whatever the comic canon is. Oh, yeah. As long as it makes sense within their little world oh, yeah. that they're making... So, I'll begrudge them the name. I just, yeah. I just have that part of me that's like, but, but, but there's a ready-made name right here, and then we could still get this team later. Uh-huh. <laughs> but yeah, um, I mean, I also have no doubts that that's coming later at all. I mean, the way they played off uh, Luke Cage and uh, Jessica, Jones. no, uh, what's his name, Iron Fist, Danny Rand. Well, yeah. I'm hoping that we get a Power Man Iron Fist series. They, they are building bridges in this series for that. Which, yes. uh, yeah, like, to me, one of the greatest things was um, the boardroom fight. At the very beginning, or at the very beginning of the boardroom fight, after, after Danny's fought for a little bit and Luke busts in, and they had fan service shots in there. Not, not like, beefcake fan service. <laughs> not, that's not what I mean, but I mean, like, there were, I counted at least three different poses that were iconic Power Man Iron Fist poses, and... Like, they, they work for the fight. It's not like they struck a pose midway through the fight. Like, all of their iconic poses are stuff like them back-to-back fighting or, like, Danny leaping over Luke to punch somebody, stuff like that. Uh-huh. Um, and, like, I, I, I had a comic gasm when I saw that. Like, <laughs> oh. oh, my God, it was great. The, the, for the first time ever, seeing Power Man and Iron Fist fighting side by side in a live action TV or live action TV show like blew my mind it was so cool yeah I mean that, that was a pretty good scene I that, thought the escape the, from the boardroom yeah it was the hallway fight for season <laughs> three dead <laughs> no, <I wasn't. laughs> it was the hall, hallway fight for what is basically the season three of Daredevil uh-huh. I mean <clears throat> uh, see that was one of the things that I thought this series did really well I thought they didn't, because it very easily could have devolved into an Avengers 2 kind of thing, where it was, again, uh, a story about Stark, where you have a sidebar story about uh, uh, Hulk and uh, uh, Black Widow. It could have devolved into just being about Daredevil, but I don't think it actually did that. I think that would have been the easy way to go for them, the slazy way to go, I should say, not easy. But I think they did a good job of, like, spreading out the interest in the plot. I think. I mean, I think it was mostly Daredevil and Danny Rand. Mm-hmm. It was pretty much evenly split, split between those two, mm-hmm. down yeah. to the last couple of scenes. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, I would argue that they're the they're the things that people want to talk about in the script. But um, I think we talked about it before. I think probably if you're talking about what what characters did the most with what they were given, yeah. I want to say. Jessica Jones and Daredevil. Oh yeah, they were. Oh yeah, I mean the best <laughs> actor. I, I loved yeah. their. I loved their interplay. Mm-hmm. Like their interplay throughout the whole thing, uh, especially like, <laughs> and they they did some great work with the camera here. Um, <clears throat> just great scripting. I, I one of my favorite scenes is when we <clears throat> they're standing outside the um, the building that the hand is in. And uh, we, we have a nice close-up shot of Jessica and Luke as they're, like, legitimately going over their plan. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Camera pulls out, and there's Matt, like a fucking dork in his complete <laughs> bulletproof costume. He's like, all right, let's do this. And Jessica just looking up, there it is again. <laughs> you know? I mean, like, the, all the actors and actresses, their interplay was amazing. Um, and I like the fact that they kept Daredevil as... As kind of the the heart of the group, as the funny, the comic one of the group, mm-hmm. you know, it, it led to a lot of stuff because it led to the, the other three do a lot better as straight men mm-hmm. in this, it's, and especially like again, uh, oh, I think it might have even been the same episode when uh, they're looking down the elevator shaft and Jessica's sit going like you know, 
if if you told me two weeks ago that I'd be here with you two, you know, I'd say you were crazy. And like Matt does this whole like I'm the heart of the group thing with you know like well I, I'm glad you're here. I mean like I'm I'm glad that we were able to find each other and that we could be doing this together. And like just Michael Coltair, the look on his face, please. I am not hugging you. <laughs> like, it just, you know, and the the way Coltier and um, what's his name who plays Rand? I'm, mm-hmm. I, I apologize. I'm bad with his name. Yeah. he's either Lorenz Ty- <laughs> Lorenz Tyrell or Danny Rand. That's all I know him as is those two characters. Um, but yeah, you know, like their interplay, the way they hold, the way they bicker back and forth, like it, it, it all felt natural. Yeah, I like the uh, pot sticker sharing scene. I think that yeah. between the two of them mm-hmm. really said, like, yeah, we're going to be doing a show together. Mm-hmm. I, I, I hope so. Because I mean, they were able to disagree but still have that peace between them yeah. to share food. You yeah. Know? So I thought that was pretty cool. It really <laughs> brought them in as characters and forced them to actually have dialogue as opposed mm-hmm. to making it about the hand or mm-hmm. whatever else. Was yeah. Trying to destroy New York. Anyway. And might I say that of a city of uh, like seven or eight million people, I figure at least four million of them are ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> at least four million. <laughs> That's a rough estimate. Yeah, because <laughs> a lot of ninjas go down <laughs> in this in this show. They're immortal. Eh. Not. I all. think only the top five are immortal. Yeah, and they there wasn't were... enough of the stuff. You no, gotta get the stuff. Nobu came anymore. back. Nobu came back. Because they had Season the juice. Season two of Daredevil. They had the juice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They ran um, out of juice. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> their uh, wonderful black sludge dragon bone juice. Mm. <laughs> Suck that dragon bone. Mm. But, yeah, speak, I think you're speaking of it. That totally, like, blew me away. Like, the thing they're after is, like, the dragon... Yeah, from I thought they were, I thought the whole go, going back to what what Kung Lun was like an actual thing. I thought they wanted to have a portal made somehow, or maybe there was some kind of gateway below the building that they could go in there. They could either sneak in there, take over, or they were actually having this crazy change of heart where it's like that's where we belong, kind of thing. I was on that ride up until like the the zoom out, and it's the fucking bones of the dragon. Uh. Like yeah. that's that that was for me a cool a really cool like scene. the stuff that's been keeping them alive are dragon bones like yeah. holy shit okay yeah. so I was like ninety percent sure that that portal was going to lead to the cave or to <clears throat> to the dragon cave but yeah I I didn't call the the black sludge being dragon bones oh yeah, yeah. Like, well that it wasn't and, that and that wasn't a real portal portal it it was a cave network remains, because yeah. the remains are under New York City. Mm-hmm. And that's what they were, that was the whole thing of when they took, the, these remains are literally building the foundation, like support pillars for the island. Oh, gosh. And so yeah. that, that's why they were saying that when they take this, the city will fall. It's not because they're going to lay siege to it. It's not because, like, they're ready to attack it. It's because when they take this, they're removing the cornerstones of the of the physical island. Oh. You didn't think it was so literal as that. You thought it actually fought by fall meant like fucking like uh, League of Shadow shit from the beginning. Yeah. Be- I'm just gonna unleash the unleash the. No, um, and, Gal has her whole dialogue. She's gonna call New York. That's why I was confused. Well, you also have to look at the other cities that they used as examples where they said this happened. Mm-hmm. Are cities like Chernobyl and uh, Pompeii, uh-huh. where. These were, like, massive natural disasters. Okay, Chernobyl not, but we know. But yeah. these were massive disasters that were written off as, no, 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 it was a volcano. Uh-huh. No, 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 it was a nuclear meltdown. No, it was the hand removing the foundations from under these cities. Uh-huh. Huh. <coughs> I don't Wait. know. Yeah. Is this a fan theory, or is this, like... No, th- this was right in the ep- I mean, that's what they were talking about in the episode. Like when they take when they take this, the city will fall. Oh, I didn't think. No, see, I didn't take it literally because I don't think it was meant literally. I think uh, it meant, oh, we're going to be immortal now, so we can kill everyone. Okay, well, <laughs> one one last piece of that pu- of it of the puzzle. Then they made a specific mention that when the building imploded at the end, that it stabilized the site. It stabilized Who that. Who made that site. mention? Uh, that was. Oh, God, that was said by, I want to say, Foggy. Because I know it's when they're kind of talking about, like, like what happened after. 
um, and the reasons why nobody's getting charged. Um, I do remember that. Yeah, like, I want to say it was Foggy when he's talking to Luke in, in Luke's apartment. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, it was either that or it must have been, like, Karen. Mm-hmm. But, um, but, yeah. But I thought that meant, oh, the site is stable now because nobody's messing with the dragon bones. Okay. See, I, and again, I'm kind of on your side there, Mr. E, a little bit because... That, that sort of, like, goes back to, like, the Ghostbusters episode where it's, like, there's one pillar holding up all of Manhattan and yeah. the ghosts have taken the oil, essentially, from it. And so it's causing earthquakes. That yeah. site is maybe roughly a block big. <laughs> so if that whole fucking island is sitting on a, a structure that's only a block big, that's fucking dangerous I mean, shit. you can well, hand wave it well, with no, no. magical dragon. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, there's a fucking but... dragon out there. Well, also, here's the thing. We don't know the extent of the dragon boats. Uh-huh. They just seem to go on into the distance, and then the cave took a turn. I mean, you well, can you can we guess get a full it. shot. Can, yeah, you, they pull out. There's a full overhead shot, if you want so you to. can make it out. There's wings, end of tail. Oh, okay. You see the basically the tattoo okay. that is on. I, I missed that. It been it's like fucking a, huge. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think it's like, it in might, my opinion, Manhattan sinking huge. It might be like a city block or two. Right. Like yeah. See, I saw it was basically it's a giant sinkhole because they were also saying that it wasn't going to be. The entirety of the city gets destroyed, like yeah. all all the islands and everything. Yeah, it was no. A lot of people are going to die here, but why? Why should we care? Cities fall all the time. Yeah, and it would be kind of weird if dragons were the foundation for all these cities. You know, like um, I, I understand. It, it, it's it's nebulous. It's well, at, kind at, of at that point, for why why are all these cities springing up specifically over dragon bones? It, you put it down to that's when you start getting mystical about it. Of the idea that people are drawn to sites of power, yeah, and whether they know it or not, whether it's a subconscious, mystical, mm-hmm. or psych- psychic pull, they're being drawn to these grave sites of these legendary dragons. Because uh, I think it was um, those fucking Native Americans had no idea they sold that yeah. island for a handful Gosh. of beads. Yeah, <laughs> but Alexandra still thinks that they paid too much. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, okay, so uh, Ellen Ripley here, <laughs> Sigourney Weaver. Wow, she did a good job. She was good. Mm-hmm. She like, was fun to watch. She was having a blast. You know, it just gets to be evil and have good character motivation and all that, that good stuff. That's a very good reference. She's like an evil Ellen Ripley. Yeah. And that girl, Electra, was like her newt. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> wow, that, that fits way too well, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> She's made of plastic. Yeah, <laughs> like sorry, I'm just picturing Newt with that that look that she gives Ellen with a you know. Well, they, see, there are no bad dreams in here. She's made of plastic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like, and that that's the moment when uh, Electra shanks uh, when Jinx. Because mm-hmm. uh, by the way, same uh, same actress who played Jinx in GI Joe Retaliation. Mm-hmm. Um, I, by the way, I think she did she did a lot better of an acting job in this than in Daredevil season two. Mm-hmm. I think she's definitely progressing in her craft. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that Electra wasn't one hundred percent all about Daredevil uh-huh. was great. It almost felt like actual Electra. Uh-huh. <laughs> it only took her being inhabited by an evil god for that to happen. Yeah, I mean, well, you know what? They fucked yeah. up in season two. I mean, I mean again, I, I don't really feel I have a lot of loyalty to that. Yeah. I liked Daredevil season two um, because she was almost like a dark mirror of him. But she was willing to do the things that he wanted, that he was unwilling to do. And at the same time, had this incredible connection to him. Which I think they played off a little bit in this one. Yeah. Oh no, they definitely played it so, off in that. My my issue was you you took a fully autonomous like one hundred percent independent woman mm-hmm. and went. She's now a slave to this man's backstory. Mm-hmm. Like that that's a blow to him to an awesome character. Well, again, I think it kind of worked within, yeah. within the season two. I, I also felt like the, their writing so. was very weak when it came to that. Yeah. And and also with Daredevil season two, there was way too much Punisher. Yeah, I mean they were definitely had a lot of um, irons in the fire. For yeah, for that for that season. But we're not here to discuss Daredevil season. Yeah, two. this is Defenders. <laughs> time. Come on, guys. Yeah, yeah. What country. about that Punisher teaser earlier? Oh my god. Oh yeah, yeah. actually, I, I, I still cool. I yeah. do still need to see that. Um, Netflix did its thing where I didn't realize that there was a teaser at the end of the last episode. Huh. So Netflix just like kind of minimized the credits and was like. You should watch this thing that you have no interest in watching. 
And, um, like it does. <laughs> a lot. You just finished The Defenders. Now watch, I don't know, Flubber. I don't know. The, 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 I, I still love, though, uh, when I finished watching Jessica Jones the first time, mm-hmm. while the credits were rolling, it said, you've just watched Luke Cage. <laughs> this was way before Luke Cage came out. I'm like, Wow. I mean, he was in the series, but wow. <laughs> Since you brought up Jessica Jones, and I think yeah. that was probably one of the high points for the Defenders for me, I'll just roll into some commentary on her. Go ahead. I mean, I initially did not like that series. Like, I stopped at, like, episode two, maybe three, and said, this fucking Which I don't sucks. get, because it seems like it'd be the one that's the most <clears throat> hardcore up your alley. It's, it's okay. We hounded him enough. And I actually did go back and, and watch it, and it was actually really, really good. And this is the reason why. Because she shakes off that whole notion of like not wanting the powers and you know you know being whiny about it and whiny about having them. Now, what initially kind of threw me off is that she's sort of back there again in Defenders, where she doesn't want to be involved. She just wants to be left alone and all that kind of mm-hmm. thing. And I thought that was like a little bit weird, but then I, I remembered that they're trying to retrace some steps because if you hadn't seen Jessica Jones, you kind of want to see her come around. So. There's a reason why she's mm-hmm. fighting in the end of this, and it gives you a sense of her character really yeah. quickly. You know, she's, yeah. she's reluctant. You know, yeah. she doesn't. Well, and also with this, she may have been more okay with the fact that she personally has powers. Mm-hmm. Now she's kind of come to grips with that. And Jessica Jones, she was struggling with that because of all the things that Kilgrave made her do, and yeah, up to and including Luke's killing Luke's wife, mm-hmm. like um, because of all the stuff that that. Um, that she all the bad stuff that she had done with her powers like that's why she hated having her powers then yeah. but she came to grips with it when she saw she could protect people mm-hmm. but she also in defenders i saw it more as <clears throat> yeah i have these powers i i'm not required to use them mm-hmm. like just because just cuz say <clears throat> i own a gun does that mean i have to go jo- you know if the police are having a shootout why should i have to go take my gun and go help right. them Right. Like, I have that power. I could go help the police. Uh-huh. But I could just as easily keep doing my own thing and not get involved. And that's what... Right. I saw it less as her being like, I hate the fact that I have these powers, mm-hmm. and more of like, I just want to live my life. Right. I want to get back to normal. I just went through, like, the most traumatic thing I have ever gone through for the second time, jacked up on steroids. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, I just want to get back to normal. Like, she had... I mean, she wasn't even taking <clears throat> cases at the time. Right. She still had the paper up on her window and everything. Right. And don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's not that I'm saying that that was a bad thing. Oh, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. She's yeah. one of my high points of the movie because she has that very quick arc to the point where she's like, we're going to do this. We're just like, we're going to do fine. this. Let's just get it over with. Yeah. We're, we know we're going to do this kind of thing. <laughs> and that's that's the kind of things that I gravitate to. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad that she got to that point. Um, I don't know. I guess... I don't know, you guys want to talk about some things that, that worked and then some things that didn't work? Yeah. I mean, I'll, I started with Jessica. She worked for me. What about you, Mystery? Jessica and Murdoch. Mm-hmm. I think are what about no, Murdoch? Because you didn't yeah. like season two Daredevil, right? I don't remember much of season two Daredevil, okay. to be honest. It's, All right. It wasn't that I didn't like it. I just didn't like it. Um, okay. I just feel like his journey to becoming the leader of this group kind of taking up that mantle was really endearing as a character for him. Mm-hmm. And for Jessica, her coming to terms with the fact that she has power and that she has strength and, hey, maybe I actually kind of enjoy doing this. I actually enjoy helping people. Mm-hmm. Even though I was totally against it and I don't feel like I should have to take responsibility for having these powers. Right. I mean, they have the more interesting character stories where, whereas Danny Rand is on and off again, uh-huh. annoying to me. <laughs> right. well, well, again, I mean, uh, just interject because you because you added that. I think Danny was was really in because of the series is so short. They really had to distill what his role was mm-hmm. oh, very yeah. quickly. Yeah, I think if Danny wasn't there, I mean, I think there would be a definite void. It's not like he it's not like he's a throwaway character in this force. Well, he was the initial leader of the group. Mm-hmm. Right. Up, up until his dumbass gets kidnapped. Um, well, they keep making reference to him being the kid of the group because mm-hmm. he really is. He just does all the impulsive stuff. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, he needs a mentor. He needs to grow. Mm-hmm. That's what his second season, if it happens, will be. Oh, yeah, it got greenlighted. Oh, good, yeah. good, good. Because I feel like that really mm-hmm. needs to happen for me. Mm-hmm. Like oh, as a character. Uh, 
Also, <laughs> quick thing on him. Uh, around the time of Civil War in mm-hmm. the comics, um, I do not for the life of me remember what happened to Matt, but for whatever reason, Matt was not around anymore, and Danny was wearing the Daredevil costume, mm-hmm. carrying the baton, and running around Hell's Kitchen because he made a promise to Matt to protect the city. Just something to keep in mind yeah. because of the way the... Because of the ending. Also, that was probably that nun was probably Matt's mother. I'm calling it now. Oh, the no, nun she, that was she, she called Matt's mother, huh. Maggie. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. I miss I miss then. Yeah. Okay, because I was gonna say like I know his mother's a nun. Yeah, they set that up okay. straight up. Is uh, re- it's supposed to reference uh, Daredevil storyline created by Frank Miller? So, yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to be basically the first panel on that. Um, I'm blanking on the name of. I'm blanking on the name of that storyline, but it was a really, really good storyline. Daredevil Reborn, I want to say. Yeah, that sounds about right. About right. <clears throat> Amazing storyline. Also, the also that story is the entire reason why I keep waiting for Karen Page to become like a raging like <laughs> heroin addict, raging heroin addict, porn star bitch who like betrays man. So, but, and since so. you since you said it, what do you think about the the peripheral characters? Oh, like Night Nurse. Oh, Foggy, amazing. Karen, they did and, a great uh, job. Misty, Colleen, Colleen. I think Misty really shined for me. Yes, I like and it finally character. happened. I, the thing I was waiting for all of Luke Cage for <laughs> this to happen. <laughs> what? She lost her arm. Oh, okay. Everybody wants the mechanical. Arm. Okay. Yeah. By the way, by the way, I'm gonna. I, the one time I'm gonna be competitive towards Ra Ra. Mm-hmm. That 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 like guarantee. All right, because I want to cut this off now. Huh? I want to cut this off now. <laughs> if if hands are up, I don't know what's going huh? on. <laughs> Only one. <laughs> Only one. Um, okay. If in a future Netflix show, she has an arm created by Tony Stark. Oh, it will be. You. I don't want to hear a bunch of bitchy because that is exactly who she got her arm from in the comics. Uh-huh. It's not them being like, oh, Tony has to do everything. Uh-huh. Also, I believe Tony's really the only one with the skill to make that. But yeah, she winds up, her mechanical arm in the comics was uh-huh. made by Tony Stark. Mm-hmm. And funded by Danny Rand. Okay. So I, I might let that slide. That that's the well, one time I'm gonna like that's know. the one time I'm, during this this podcast I'm gonna be like right, but like because I, mean, I love that so much. I love that like Tony was like, oh my god, yo, you've done so much here. Let me, yeah. I'm like, yeah. And then but Colleen, would that make sense? Yeah, Colleen was already like, oh, Rand is gonna take care of you. Yeah. yeah. So and it, you it know, makes what? perfect sense. And, and in sense. there, like part of getting the absolute best for her, yeah, would be getting the best per the person who knows robotics the best, which. Oh God! Sorry, I, I just vomited a little in my mouth because I said would be the guy. I was about to say the guy who uh, made Ultron, uh-huh. and it's like, but that would be Hank Pym. Yeah. Let's be honest here. Well, not not in that universe. Yeah, I know, not in that universe. That's yeah. why it goes to Tony Stark. Yeah. Oh. See, <laughs> see. <laughs> no, actually, I'm as blind as Matt on this one. <laughs> God, I'm not gonna have the hate for Tony that you do. I might have, like, the hate for Bruce that you have for Tony. Uh, that I, might happen, but... I am completely neutral in this matter. Yes, okay, anyways, anyways, <laughs> yeah, conti- back to the continuing on. So we're talking about the peripheral characters. Yeah. Um, one, one thing I also love about when Misty and Colleen show up mm-hmm. in the fights uh-huh. is they add a little variety, because, let's be honest, the uh, our main team here is two heavy beat sticks and two martial artists. Yeah. Like... <laughs> In one strong arm that can push people around. <laughs> um, and we, uh, and when those two show up, which also I'm so happy we're, we're getting kind of our best friend Colleen and uh, Misty Knight together again, which is great. Um, I'm hoping they start the new heroes for hire. Um, but anyways, uh, like them adding in. Well, now we have someone with a sword. Now we have someone with a gun. Mm-hmm. Like let's actually, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And even Night Nurse threw down a little bit, too. Hell yeah, Giant Wrench. Ooh, I'm scared about that. I'm scared that Rosario Dawson's going to get killed off. You think so? Yeah. What? What? So now to, that... to, to make room for the, the Luke and Jessica couple. No, yeah. I think they'll just break them off. I don't know. She's it's... really cool. I like her. Yeah, and that's the thing. She has way too much positive, positive like, reaction I from fans. I guess it depends on her as an actress if she wants to keep doing it. Like, mm-hmm. if she, yeah. If she's done, then... Also, they might not go the Luke Jessica route. Like they touched on it in Luke, in Jessica's series, 
They touched Lots down it in defenders too. Yeah. yeah, they did. They did. So who who knows? I mean, also I believe they. Well, they're making a Squirrel Girl cartoon, I believe. So and there's a live action. Oh, too. okay, it is live action. Yeah. So <laughs> so who knows? You know, maybe Squirrel Girl will get to be a cameo and be the, the nanny. Girl. The Geico Girl is going to be it. Really? Yeah. Flo? Yeah. No, no, not <laughs> Flo. There's oh, no, no, that's the progressive. 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 Yeah, that's it. Progressive. Yeah. Got my insurances mixed up. Progressive is Flo. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, Geico, Ge- the Geico, then it's right, the Geico Girl. They have the Gecko. No, they also have this really young girl who was actually kind of super cute. And uh, she's been in a couple movies. She got, hasn't gotten a whole lot of acting Which credits. Geico commercials was she in? About? I don't know. No, is it Verizon? It might I be Verizon. Who are you talking about? I'm going to look this up Are, are you talking to the AT&T girl? <laughs> AT&T girl, that's it. Oh, that's my it. God. Yeah. <laughs> See, Jesus I knew it was we got through the major industries <laughs> and electronics. Like corporate girls. Yeah. We, 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 got, we would get there. Um, but yeah, she's supposed to be the live action Son of one. Bitch. Marvel's New Warriors Squirrel Girl. Man, there's a lot of yeah. girls. A lot of. Wow. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, Milana Ventrub. The Yan Trub uh-huh. from This Is Us, and apparently uh, Derek Feller from Baby Daddy oh. is leading the ensemble cast. Straight to series freeform. Yeah. Um, yeah. Little squirrel. Okay. Girl. Yeah. Cool. There you go. Yeah. Could be fun. So yeah. That's all. Oh my god! <laughs> that, wait, that, wait. That's gonna be all. What? Great. This uh, Derek Feller guy, uh-huh. uh, I'm like, oh, he's going to be Speedball because it's the new fucking Warriors. <laughs> nope, they're pulling the Defenders on this. Huh? He He's going to be Mr. Immortal. Huh. We have Squirrel Girl, we have Mr. Immortal. So help me God, I'm calling this now. The rest of these new Warriors are going to be Big Bertha, Flatman, maybe Grasshopper, definitely Doorman, maybe Dinosaur. See, right now, uh, Wade's got his hand down his pants. So he's he's barely containing himself at this point. Oh, uh, with Hawkeye and um, and um, Mockingbird as possible show ups, maybe even Deadpool, um, because they're the fucking Great Lakes Avengers, man. The Great Lakes Avengers, the best worst superhero team ever. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm a huge man. Great Lakes fan. Uh, Very good. Great Lakes Very Avengers good. represent. We're, we're, okay. Pet the kitty calms down. <laughs> Pet the kitty calms down. Fuck you, just because you don't know good teams. All right. Um, <laughs> I was fighting words. They have a girl who is an anthropomorphic pterodactyl, and her name is literally Dinah Soar. I mean, come on. S O R E or S A U R? S O A R. All right. Um. Mm-mm-mm. All right, I'm going to jump in. I actually got kind of annoyed by uh, uh, the, uh, what's her name? Karen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she, she does got, that. She got really whiny. Yeah. Like, it's like. Matt, why are you doing this? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah why are you yeah. being a superhero? Who I like superheroes. Well, like, even on. Foggy came around and was like, Matt's going to do this. I can either help or I can be like this bitch. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he, even he made a decision. Yeah, even was... though, in theory, Matt like stole his girl and lied to him, and they had been friends forever, and all this bullshit. Even he came around. But this woman was just would not let up. How dare he put his life in danger when it has no effect on mine that I'm thinking about, even though it does? Yeah, it's because like, she wants to bang him again. <sighs> yeah. Did they do it? No, I don't. I don't know. Probably off camera. Oh, I can't remember. I, I can't remember either. Might have to do some research on. No, that. like I'm thinking in between the shows. Oh, like I, I'm. Are you talking about like the actor and actress? No, no, I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking off the, from the way there. that they're acting at the beginning of Defenders, mm-hmm. the, like uh, after the court case when they see each other. They definitely have the vibe of we we used to bang and then we've kind of broken it off. But we kind of still want to bang, so we're still flirting. Yeah. All kind of, kind of the same. It had the same feel when they were talking at the beginning of the series that, like, when Jessica and Luke ran into each other. Uh, yeah, it, like it had that kind of feel. Yeah. For me. I'm gonna have to do research on this. But it's yeah, called Rule34.com. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't oh, go that's... there with if your parents are in the room, kids. Yeah. <laughs> or do maybe they'll yeah, like it. Yeah, children. Oh. 
It's boring. Yeah. And I'm just I gonna know s- you're listening out there. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna say this 35 minutes in, there's spoilers in this. <laughs> yes. yeah. Okay, so if you're listening now, please stop the recording. There are spoilers. Yep, from this point on. <laughs> Matt Murdock, Matt Murdock is secretly Tony Stark. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's it. Dun, dun, dun. Um, so what did you guys think of like the action in this in this series because I know that Sam is getting tired of the the hallway scene reader scene reiteration. Okay, that, 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 I mean, that uh, happened with what I said earlier. Right. Okay, I so, don't. I like the hallway fights, and I I like that they've kind of become a like a trademark or staple of these Netflix shows. Mm-hmm. Every every series has at least one hallway fight, and you know what? They've always been beautifully choreographed. Mm-hmm. My, I do love the choreography in the series. My one singular gripe, and th- and this is because it's not just with this series; mm-hmm. it was with pretty, it was with pretty much all the other ones too, mm-hmm. and a lot of movies at large, mm-hmm. in- including like some of the like big name blockbuster. Actually, most of the action movies. Mm-hmm. I am tired of poorly lit slash night fighting. Oh. I am tired of. Okay, I think I can kind of make out what's going on here. Mm-hmm. And this is why I love the hallway fight towards the beginning so much. It is like the most brightly lit corridor yeah. you will ever see. Yeah. Like, but when they were fighting in the fucking parking garage slash down, like, in, down in the cavern. Yeah. It was kind of hard to make, like, what I did see, I loved. It was uh-huh. a really quick flash. But, yeah. The cavern and, scenes, yeah, and, like, trying to figure out, you know, when you have multiple people fighting, like, Okay, was that Bakudo who just made that hit, or the the Japanese guy who's not Nobu? See, that's the thing. I think I think that sort of lends itself to when you when you cross all these these uh, types of shows together. I mean, Daredevil is very ground level, and because yeah. he's only one guy you're following, I think it's easy to see him and shoot him taking on, you know, four guys. But in this sense, not only were they in confined spaces, like being underground, but you have many different people who fight differently. Yeah, because like Jessica's yeah. just like, <laughs> yeah, punch. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, throwing the, people around. I'm just talking about seeing yeah. the area. I mean, and mm-hmm. the, this is one thing that I'll give movies like Man of Steel. <laughs> like, because I, I was sitting there and thinking about this. Like, you know what? The Metropolis fight mm-hmm. was pretty well lit. Mm-hmm. You could tell. Like, you could see pretty much every punch Zod and Soup's threw at each other. Mm-hmm. You know, and this is one thing I love about the Battle of New York from Avengers. Mm-hmm. It is midday. Uh, uh-huh. Winter Soldier, another one. Midday, yeah. holy shit, you can make out what's going on. But then you get fights like this, um, and like some of the darker lit fights uh-huh. in like when you're dealing with like lower passages and Thor and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. I mean, I'm not defending anything oh. that they've done because I think I think you you break up some make some very good points. But I'm yeah. saying like from their standpoint, oh oh yeah, because it's like a street level uh, well, series. Yeah. There are going to be times where you can't see where the punch is coming, and you can't see where the guy is flying. And yeah. I think they're trying to convey that, especially in this swirling melee, where you want to see the wushu that Rand is doing, yeah. along with like the sort of like uh, Krav Maga that that you know Daredevil is doing, and just the brawling that you know Jessica is doing, and just like the fucking steamroller that yeah. Luke Cage. Yeah, that scene was cool. Like yeah. you saw them working as a team, and that yeah. was great about that scene. Uh-huh. But I think the. My two favorite fights, maybe, well, we can kind of throw them here. Two, my two favorite ones were the boardroom, because it was so well lit and it was just uh-huh. very well choreographed. And then the fight between Danny and Luke when they meet for the first time. Yeah, that was a cool, <laughs> that was a cool fight. Because <laughs> it just gave you the sense of what it must be like to be a normal person going yeah. up against him. It's well, like, he's a tank. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it wasn't until he lit his chi that yeah. he even did, did anything. And I but, mean, but let me ask this of you: Did you find it incredibly weird, though, and plot convenient that how easily he was knocked out? Because it takes the Iron Fist to throw him against the wall, but he's still not knocked out. But Electra can do it with a kick to the head. But she's the Black Sky, man. Yeah, but she's can the she, Black Sky. Can she punch a you know what that off means. its hinges? It means saw, she's the Black Sky. Yeah, I mean <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Plot convenient <laughs> to knock him. I'm out. I'm trying to remember when did she knock him out. Uh, when she's recapturing Danny. Yeah. He may have been succumbing to the... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, sense. that's the yeah. thing. That's it the it was the knockout drug. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what really... Because, remember, Luke had first gotten up to mm-hmm. go take... To go stop Stick. 
mm-hmm. from killing Danny. Right. And, yeah. <laughs> but, um, cause, and even Danny succumbed to it. Yeah. I mean, they don't really explain it, but I'm guessing, obviously, Stick is just immune to it. Right. So he, he was just like... Because he's fucking Stick! Because he yeah, he's Scott shit. goddamn Glenn! Which I was really kind of shocked when they when they waxed him. Yeah. Yeah. Spoiler! <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. I mean... A, I wasn't expecting him to be like, well, I'm going to fucking kill you, Danny, because that's the only way to prevent the war. No, I, I was... I, I was thinking that. about that for a while. Like, really? Really? Honestly. Yeah. Wow. I wasn't that makes sense that. because there's always going to be another Iron Fist. When uh, when they were fighting each other, or sorry, when Danny was fighting the other three, right. being like, yo, you guys want me to go hide? Well, I'll do this on my own. When he was having his little temper tantrum, uh-huh. yeah, and like Luke had to knock him out, uh-huh. um, that's when I thought, I'm like, when is Stick going to gonna be like, well, the pragmatic thing would be to just kill him. Yeah. Like, because if I kill him, they can't get him. Right. Yeah, and it's gonna be another, like, 50 years before another Iron yeah. Fist comes around. So I, I was actually kind of curious, but... <laughs> but but see, up until that point, the Chaste were there to serve the Iron Fist. Like, mm-hmm. he was their No, he was they serve I think yeah. that was a specific thing. Did so they serve, well, by, they're protecting Kun Lun. They're, they don't the chase protect Kun Lun, or yeah. are they an arm of what the Iron Fist wants to do? Because I got a sense that they're sort of like his soldiers. Like the Iron Fist is the general, and his mm. job is to protect Kun Lun, but the chase were sort of like his his guys to do that with. Mm. Ideally, the idea is the Iron Fist is the guardian, and the chase were sent out in the world to fight the hand. Yeah, but they weren't. It wasn't a direct relationship of I control. I control the chase because right. the Iron Fist was never even supposed to leave, so he's not really supposed to give orders. Yeah, let's be honest; he's not really an Iron Fist. He kind of sucks at his job. Well, <laughs> you know, that's the thing when when he left and opened up uh, and opened up Kung Lun to be fucking wrecked by the hand, yeah, <laughs> to be well fisted. Because oh. get it? There's no, five fingers in the. What? Yeah, okay, well, I, I kind of misread that part. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still wasn't thinking they were going to go that route. You know, I thought it was going to pan out, like, they were going to come back, and they were going to figure out some other way before he woke up. You See, know? because Stick has always been so severe, uh-huh. like, even when, uh, especially in <laughs> Daredevil Season 2, like, he was always ready for the worst-case scenario. Like, right. if we got to go to war, we go to war, no ifs, ands, or buts right. about it. And he still had that going on in Defenders, like cutting off his own hand yeah, and all that. Say, he cut off his own hand, like, and he didn't like even do anything. He just like, and yeah, gone. like well, again, again, he's Scott motherfucking Glenn. <laughs> well, he, he's called Stick because he actually has sticks for arms. He couldn't actually feel that coming off. Wow, <laughs> just <laughs> okay. <laughs> so wait, you could say that the stick was splintered. Teenage Mutant uh, Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant. No. no, seriously. That's why Splinter yeah. is called Splinter. And then the mm-hmm. foot. Yeah. Anyways, and that's also why they all used to wear red bandanas because Daredevil. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, but yeah, it's like I was waiting for him because that is the most practical course mm-hmm. of action. Mm-hmm. If I remove the Iron Fist, they can't get him, and it's an acceptable casualty. You already removed his Iron Fist. Yeah. Not, not Daddy's. <laughs> I think Danny's ever masturbated with that hand, like while it's lit with the chi. Probably. <laughs> wow. No, he's chased. No, he's no, he's not chased. Well, he he was uh, <clears throat> celibate up until the last season, right? Colleen. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody was jerking it. Yeah. Well, I mean, he he did kind of, although he didn't <laughs> want to get with June, but uh, mm-hmm. she's possibly a villain now. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck's going on with her. Who's June? Uh, the blonde chick, his childhood friend. Meacham, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, there yeah her go. name was June, right? June Meacham, yeah. yeah. That's right. Um, yeah, so there was that. Um, <laughs> by the way, uh, Foggy Delson, major props. Foggy Delson, always a pleasure whenever he shows up. Yeah, well, he was good. I liked him. He, he is the world's best avocado. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He is the world's best avocado. That's, a good, that's an accurate description. <laughs> I mean, like, I am so glad that he's... Even though he's working for a person who I lost a lot of respect for, mm-hmm. Hogarth, 
because of all the shit that went down Jessica Jones. Like, yeah. I'm glad that he has a nice job with an office and, like, he's banging the hot blonde uh, partner in the yeah. firm. You know, yeah. like, I'm glad he's got this, like, nice life yeah. all set up. He's just... I like his character, but something about his acting, like, his voice is great, but he just comes off as stoic. Yeah. Do you know what that is? Like, there's a disconnect between his I don't know. I was just thinking of as, like, just kind of young. And yeah, just, he's just like, a dude. Well, and that, and that's the thing. He's that's just why, a dude. That's why the avocado thing is so apt. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's the thing. Because through it all, like, he is a good, probably even yeah. great lawyer. Like, yeah. he, you know, he, but he's still foggy. Yeah, he's still yeah. who he is. Just like how, it's like how I love love when we saw Matt in the courtroom in this, where like we see Matt destroy <laughs> the uh, defense's uh, case, like utterly destroy. It. But then he walks out and immediately fumbles over himself, trying to like try to get try to like be like, well, maybe we should go out for for dinner. Yeah, <laughs> let's go talk about this case over over drinks and dinner and stuff. Mm-hmm. Also, by the way, I want to note I. Luke, I think, is getting ready to cheat on Claire. As evidenced by the end of the series, when Jessica goes, maybe we should go grab coffee, which we all know is Luke Cage code for let's go bang. And he's like, maybe we will. (laughs) (laughs) So unless he's trying to to talk Claire into a threesome with Jessica, which I don't think would happen. That's that's why I think Claire's going to die. Because 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 she's not going to die. Because she's great, and they're cute together, and it's... It would just really suck if you cheated on her. So. Yeah, yeah. No, like I, I think there would, it would really suck. I think yeah. there will come something, some point where they where they break up over like a, where they realize, hey, you know, we're great as friends, but we really don't work as a couple. They work so well as a couple. What are you talking about? <clears throat> he waited for her to get out, so she waited for him to get out of prison. Yes, yes. damn, I mean, man, Dude, and that's she, some shit. That was the first time they banged too, mm-hmm. when we saw it in the in uh, Defenders, mm-hmm. because she said, "I'm glad I waited." Yeah, but she, you know, once that little honeymoon period's over, and like she finds out that he never puts the toilet seat down or something, yeah, or like that he still moans his his uh, dead wife's name in the middle of the night or something. But that's the thing; they set him up to be like this really simple, very sort yeah. of sweet guy. So to have him like. Fuck her over in that way. Literally. Yeah, yeah, no, no. But by, by the I way, mean, yeah, no. I was, I was completely joking. It's just I wanted to pick on the fact that they totally use the Luke Cage "Let's go fuck." Oh yeah, code. Yeah. I mean, and like I mean, Jessica I knows that. what that means. I yeah. mean, yeah, I totally get that. But I again, want that to happen. You yeah. know, it's got to happen. Yeah, yeah but I, for I, I don't think the only way for that to happen is for her to die. There are other fun fact: people who are who do seem to be great as a couple. Do break up all the time over over stuff. No, don't this, tell me that, Joe. This happens. <laughs> this Tr- doesn't happen. Look, this is the real world, damn it. Look, some, <laughs> something could happen, and like Tropical Donut and I, like on you know the night before our wedding, find out something, and we're like, well, fuck, this is never gonna work, and like we never get married. Like this is a possibility. This can happen, and we're a great couple. You know that. Yeah, it's true. But you know. But no, I mean, especially when there's such high stress going on with stuff like saving the... May, it may even just come down to the fact of maybe it's her going, look, Luke, I love you, but I can't be part of this. I can't... If you want to keep saving the city, we we can't be together. Uh, it could be something as simple as that. What? Okay, maybe... <laughs> We've kind of got off the rails with yeah. defenders here, but... One last thing. Maybe she decides that she doesn't want to be the one who gets her ass kicked and handed to her every time. So she goes off to like learn those claw things that she was looking at the one time. And, and become Lady Deathstrike. Or whatever. <laughs> um, <and laughs> I, I can see that. I can see yeah. her saying, like, Luke, you're invulnerable, but people around you are not. Mm-hmm. That and would then, be good. And then she's like either a tired of her getting her, her, her being used as a pawn against him, mm-hmm. you know, like we're gonna, if you don't do what we say, we're gonna kill your bitch kind of thing. Or she's tra- tired of dealing with the collateral damage, like through fighting those those villains. I'm putting back together the bodies you guys are breaking. Well, and, so, and that's the thing. And she was already tired of that at the beginning of the series, right? Like that that was the big reason why at first she was mad at Misty mm-hmm. because she spent like Luke just got out of jail and she spent. 
their like afterglow cuddle time talking to him about how he doesn't need to be a hero. He doesn't have to be Harlem's hero. And then Misty swoops in and is like, we need to go for a walk. Sorry for interrupting the banging, but we need to go for a walk. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's basically like, Luke, we need Harlem's hero. So that's a way you can have your cake and eat it too. There we go. Mystery, which makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Rather than dropping a piano on it. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. And, <laughs> which I would love, but whatever. Yeah, but that, that's because you hate. <laughs> that's because you hate niceness. If, well, if they dropped a piano on Luke Cage, then he'd be fine. No, on her. Oh. No. Instead of killing her, <laughs> the purple man gets the piano movers to drop the the uh, the uh, piano on the night nurse to hurt a man who can't be hurt. Okay, that's actually... It's okay. But, uh, anyway. It, it's okay. And by the way, just, I, I guess like, Jerry Jessica it's Jones... Jerry and cool. <laughs> Jerry See, Jessica. that's why my shit is good. <laughs> no. You guys make fun of my shit, but that's good. <laughs> is it? I would... I, w- I, w- I hope... <laughs> I think Will Graham comes back and drops the piano and something. See, <laughs> during Jessica Jones, I was just waiting for Billy Piper to show up on set, just like walk over and slap Kilgrave on the back of the head and be like, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, Billy Piper, by the way, who played Rose in uh, Doctor Who. Mm. Kind of played the Tenth Doctor. No, okay. oh. There we go. Okay. Wow, seriously? That's you you, guy, I watched Doctor Who, you guys didn't know that the guy who... No, I, I, know who, I know who David Tennant is. Yeah. Yeah. Marty, yeah. Marty Crouch Jr. Doctor. here. He was I Harry Potter. Villain. Yeah. yeah. Tongue guy. Bar- <laughs> Barty Crouch Jr. That's right. <laughs> Which I gotta say, he does a really good job. <laughs> like, he, he was alright. I, I know I'm gonna get, like, lynched for saying this by probably a lot of the listeners. He was alright as the Doctor... <clears throat> He was no Christopher Eccleston. He was no Matt Smith. Mm-hmm. What, just sticking to the current, or, you know, the modern doctors. Hey, does anybody need some rope? But, um, but no, he was all right as the doctor. For the he, lynching. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I got that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. I'm like, what, are we going to drop a piece but, uh, <laughs> but David, <laughs> But David Tennant. I'm still like, doing that. Yeah, yeah he, he was all right as the doctor, but he was, he's fucking great as villains. As Kilgrave as Barty Crouch Jr., although he only shows up for like 10 minutes of that movie, um, as, oh god, the, the vampire from Fright Night. Yeah, the Fright Night remake. <laughs> oh, the remake, I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to see it. Yeah, in the, in the remake, he's a vampire. <laughs> I like that. The vampire from Fright Night. Cricket, cricket. Yeah. <laughs> I love the original movie, the, the, uh, the 80s or 90s movie, and yeah. it was 80s. That's good. Yeah, they, they, the, remake. Remake. the the remake was all right overall, but like he was good. Uh-huh. Um, it, it's like how Christopher Eccleston, who played the Ninth Doctor, is another one who's really damn good at playing villains. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was Malkith, the Accursed, in yeah. Thor: Dark World. Yeah. He was Destro yeah. in GI Joe: Rise of Cobra. Hmm. James McLuhan, oh, the Scottish guy in charge of Mars Industry. You never saw the movie, did you? But as Fuck we are droning on, why don't we go into some final thoughts here on the Defenders? What do you guys? What do you guys think? Did you say what Defenders. You Defenders. Okay. I'm glad we're mostly done with the hand, save for Gal, because Gal I liked. Uh-huh. We all love Gal. Oh my gosh, she's so great. She's awesome. That was awesome. You actually saw her do some shit in this. See, well, she saw a little bit of that in Iron Fist, but she like owned some bitches she in this one. She force pushed yeah. the shit out of some people. <laughs> yeah. That's she how is. you neutralize an invulnerable guy. You pin him against the wall with a fucking car. By the way, she is the Sith version of Yoda. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's spot on. Yeah. I did, I did like the uh, the uh, Japanese dude. I thought he was really cool. He was, I like yeah. that he spoke in Japanese the entire yeah. time. Oh, that's yeah. Awesome. That was the coolest part. Yeah. Um, and he, he was good. You know? <laughs> yeah, he wasn't, he's not Nobu because Stick killed Nobu, right? Um, in, uh, se- in the season, season two, yeah, yeah. So I, I, for a second there, it was a little, a little <coughs> bit weird, but like I really knew. It yeah, was I was a little sad that he wasn't Nobu. Yeah. yeah, I feel like Nobu would have been a stronger fifth finger mm-hmm. instead of this guy, but mm-hmm. but like he he was still a fun character, and yeah. I and I like you know a lot of a lot of the interactions we saw with him, mm-hmm. but yeah. Um, can we just call him Moon Bear? Moon Bear for his opening. All right, yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, I like that. <clears throat> yeah, his name was like Morokuto or something. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. Moon Bear. Okay, Moon I'd Bear. Like to, I'd like to look back. At that. Yeah. 
Um, what's what's well, Colleen's? Uh, Bakuto? Ba- Bakuto. Yeah. 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 He was. Yeah, yeah. He was there to get killed again. <laughs> yes, which we all wanted to happen because he is a fucking scumbag. Yeah, he yeah, yeah. he is that douchebag who like goes who goes to yoga only because he knows women, because only to like pick up checks. That's right. He is that accurate. douchebag. Yeah, he is that I douchebag like who like hangs out in who hangs out with like a yoga mat under his arm at Starbucks coffee, being like, "Hey, girl, you you, you want you want to go get coffee and talk about like but mystical life stuff?" He speaks really eloquently too. So, hey, girl. Can you yeah. please come with me, and we will talk. Yeah. Well, well, I, <laughs> but, like, he's a total D-bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked him in Iron Fist because I thought it was, like, another one of those villains where, you know, I like it when, you know, the bad isn't, like, it's totally bad. Like, there's mm-hmm. some gray in there. Yeah. Like, because in Iron Fist, they made him seem like he's giving these homeless kids direction yeah. and purpose. Yeah, to and become all murderous that, ninjas. Yeah, to become so. murderous ninjas, but maybe they become murderous ninjas to get rid of bad people. He's, just, he's just making lots you of know? Robins, that's all. I like him as the good finger of the hand. <laughs> Though in this one, I think uh, uh, they, he sort of left that behind. He was basically just a bad guy. Well, at, at, <clears throat> in this one, he lost that. Yeah. I mean, I think at this point, he was just so far in the, like, Colleen and Danny fucked over literally everything I was doing. I had to crawl back to the four people who want me dead most in the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, my head's gone. <clears throat> um, but in terms of, like, the actual series, I, I don't like ensembles. I, I mean, I think that's I'm shocked! Because <laughs> I don't think you can give them each their due. But I think even though maybe Jessica and Daredevil, like, carried the series for me, I don't think that you could remove Luke or or yeah, Danny no. and and have it still be the same kind no, of show. Right. I think they both they, they did a brilliant job of making sure that everybody had a niche mm-hmm. that they needed to well, fill, which which made me like this series, which goes against the grain for me. I actually like it. They uh, I think a lot <laughs> of that comes down to the fact they used the five the five man party trope. Now really mm-hmm. they cut down to four man party trope, which it does happen a lot. But they all filled very key roles. Comedic rogue. Uh, Matt was the Matt was the heart. Yeah. Luke was the big guy. Jessica was the lancer, and Danny was the leader. Up until, up until you removed Danny and Matt took over as leader. Yep. But uh, by the point when they're when they're in the restaurant, they're that four man band with Danny as the leader. Matt is the heart, Jessica's the lancer, and Luke's the big guy. The one person who, funnily enough, the, the fifth role that they didn't fully have somebody for, which I would kind of count Stick as this, was the smart guy. Okay. Uh, the, this is the guy that in a five-man band is normally going to be, like, the inventor. The, uh. Or the guy who's, like, studied all of this. Um, and I could also see a case being made that either Matt or Danny also doubles as the smart guy. Like, I can see Matt doubling as both the heart and the smart guy because Matt was trained by Stick. Matt knows who the hand is. like, And he knows about their operation specifically in New York. Well, I would argue that Jessica Jones is the smart guy then. Because she, she's, she, she's the one that uh, kind of uncovers everything on her own. She, I mean, she's the investigator. Yeah. Right, but she's not the one who starts off with a lo- with the knowledge of it. Like she, she's not the one that they're she's continuing. Not, she doesn't have wisdom. She, right, she, street smarts. She's not the one who who they're continually turn to, being like, "Why the fuck is blah 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 blah?" And this person goes, "Well, because yeah, Electra and I found this hole in New York City, like you know, a month ago." Or, well, you know, back when I was training in Kung Lun, they explained about the hand and the five finger, you know. Like, gotcha. It, it's not she, almost expositionary. But yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, this is going to be like in a fantasy setting. This is going to be your mage. Gotcha. Yeah, your scholar. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's not to say anyone else is dumb. It's just you have your, um, you you have very. Uh, here we go. Here we go. I got our <laughs> I got our examples to show these off. Okay. okay. Leader, Tommy the Red Ranger. <laughs> okay. The smart guy is Billy, Blue Ranger. Okay. Yeah. Um, the heart is Kimberly. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Actually, Zach, I guess, would be the Lancer, but he really wasn't a Lancer. And the... Uh, no, actually, I put him as tough guy. Okay, Joe's comparing the defenders to the Power Rangers now. Anyways, well, no, I'm I'm trying to what? explain. <laughs> no, it was uh, it was trying to explain the fi- the five man band roles like oh. to to him. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, what? But what I was saying is, um, you you have Jessica mm-hmm. as the Lancer, Lucas the tough guy, Matt as the heart. And Danny as the leader, mm-hmm. as of when they're in the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Eventually, Danny takes or uh, Matt takes over as leader mm-hmm. when Danny's removed. Mm-hmm. But um, with either Matt or uh, Danny doubling as that fifth role of the smart guy, mm-hmm. of the one who knows all this shit. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there is also a role that's just called the girl. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Wait, that which would be Karen in this case. Yeah. Yes, actually. Yeah. Um, and a lot of time, a lot of times, the reason why you'll see a three or four person ensemble that still fits the roles because the extended group is still the extended group is still uh, counting in for some of these. Hmm. You anything? Anything else to wrap it up? Anything to wrap it up? Trope uh, talk. I'm glad that this storyline is done so that they can focus on their individual stories, which I think will get really interesting from now on. Yeah, yeah, they can really. Uh, excuse me. Hello. Okay, everybody. you don't have to be an ass about it. I just want people to fucking hear your opinion. Sorry. I'm sorry. I will no longer let people hear your opinion, you uh, jack honger. I'm glad the storyline is done so that they can focus in on new stories, such as uh, Daredevil's obviously up and coming Reborn series by the looks of it. Yeah. Yep. So, so. And because Jessica Jones is great. Yeah. <laughs> I want to yeah. see more of that. Well, we already know that Kilgrave's are turning for season two. That's yep. what they're talking about. So uh, they know that his character's coming home. Whether or not he's alive or not is another well, question. Well, here's the thing: in the comics, um, Zebediah Kilgrave, as he's known in the comics, uh-huh. um, the Purple Man does always come back. Mm-hmm. Like he has been killed. I have seen him in the comics get hit by a fucking train. Yeah, literal like speeding passenger train. Mm-hmm. And um, no. He has a he does have a healing factor. It's not it's not like a crazy Wolverine Hulk healing factor where like a bullet wound heals in ten minutes. But you know what? That bullet wound might heal in like three months and he's breathing again. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Like he will he mm-hmm. always comes back. So the next time it happens they just need to incinerate him, right? Well he, he always can. comes back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it, I, I think it's kind of like uh what Joker was originally supposed to be where yeah, you, you, you might see, like, something terrible and even fatal happen to the Joker, but he was always just going to show up again, and they were never really going to address it, because yeah. the Joker's always there. I yeah. mean, he's um, such a good villain. I'm glad they're yeah. bringing him back. Uh, but yeah, so in the comics, he, he does have a healing factor. Mm. It's just it's a slow one. Yeah. Well, yeah, I have to agree with you, Mr. Mystery. I mean, it's good to so leave, good. The, leave the hand behind, I think. Yeah. And do something new. I mean, because I think they played that, that out. As far as it can go. Yeah. So, and it was a good end. They dropped a fucking building on everybody. And Gal's still so. alive, so if they ever want to do something... Gal's still alive? Gal's still alive. She pieced out, last I saw. Also, remember, somebody got Matt out of there. That's somebody right. got Matt out of there. and She uh, force-held up the whole building... She could do it. ...and dragged him out. And the anus of that dragon. <laughs> <laughs> and because, like, she... <laughs> she does... Like... She has had some runs. She does know who Matt Murdock is. Mm -hmm. Now, what her reasoning for doing it would be, I don't know, which is why I don't know if she would save him. Mm -hmm. But somebody had to get Matt out of there. Mm -hmm. And maybe it was Electra. Who knows? Um, Personally, I'm looking forward to just more of these characters. I'm also really hoping that the rumors of Midnight Suns for the next group Mm -hmm. is true. Uh, I've been hearing rumors that's going to be Punisher, Ghost Rider, Blade, and Moon Knight. Which I would fucking love. Mostly, I just want my Moon Knight Netflix series because he would do great on Netflix series. Um, but no, with, with this, I'm very happy with with the series. I think the shorter season helped them out specifically because it didn't wear on, mm-hmm. it, didn't, it didn't drag on, it didn't, it didn't wear Good out point. the welcome. I like the way they ended it with like Danny finally. Finally, having learned this fucking lesson that you know, maybe caution Woo! is something that like is useful. <laughs> it uh, took him two seasons. Sad we're not gonna see <laughs> Scott Glenn again. 
Um, but also hopeful that maybe we'll get like a Misty Knight Colleen Wing spinoff. Yeah. Cause that'd be cool. And I want to see more Daredevil or more um, more Power Man Iron Fist. Sorry. Yeah, I think everybody wants to see that. Yeah. Well, that's this episode of uh, the Healer Podcast. Uh, I guess a shout out to the Nerd pa- Nerd Podcast Mafia. Yep, and Pattern Family. Yeah. And uh, by the way, because I like plugging shit that I'm not paid to plug because it's shit I like. Um, check out if you are a literary fan or a history fan. Uh, check out Overly Sarcastic Productions on YouTube. Um, so good. <laughs> uh, I recently found them. I introduced Mr. E to their stuff. Um, just if you if you like some if you want want fun summarized movies and myths and like history and stuff, Overly Sarcastic Productions is amazing. Mm-hmm. I, like I said, I like plugging shit, even though I'm not paid to plug shit. There you go. Boom. There you go. Well, thanks for stopping by, Mr. E. Thank you. And uh, I guess that'll do it. Uh, so, bye from the Geeky Over Podcast. This is Rara. Wave. Mr. E. And that's it. We will defend. Where is it? Right there. There. Da-da-da.